just wanted to give you a brief overview of what we'll be doing in the next hour. Um, I'll begin with an overview of virtual gatherings, um, talk about Facebook watch party a little bit. Um, for video, I'm definitely recommending a service called Plex. It's an app uh, for audio Scener, uh, which is a Chrome extension. Um, and then I'll have a question and answer session, like I said, and then have some closing thoughts. So uh, I'm not going to get into the history too much, but what I will say is that webcams uh, started to get popular sometime after 2000, uh, according to PC World, um, with popular instant messenger services or apps such as AOL Instant Messenger, uh, Yahoo Messenger, and even Microsoft Messenger enabling video calls, it paved uh, the way for the webcam. I remember that while cutting edge, uh, video wasn't exactly smooth. Uh, these were inferior uh, digital cameras, um, but it was cool to see your friends or family on the internet and in real time. With companies like Apple and PC companies integrating webcams into their laptops and uh, monitors, it further encouraged mainstream practice. Um, fast forward to our current state with the social media uh, advances in technology, mobile devices, and our uh, current social limitations with the pandemic. And, um, you know, this is something that's pretty mainstream now. Uh, Zoom has uh, been the de facto standard due to its stability, reliability, simplicity, and features. Um, I'd also like to uh, add that its ability to handle uh, the amount of users uh, that it can handle in one, at one time, which is reported to be about 100, as I understand. Uh, I think most of us know Zoom, um, but just to be clear, it has a free tier. Uh, it's pretty user friendly and has a good amount of features like we're uh, using right now. Um, you can use the webcam and microphone to interact with everyone, but you can also toggle them uh, and interact with others a little bit more passively via the chat box, like I pointed out earlier. Um, and uh, you can record sessions and it has the management capabilities for your gatherings or meetings as they call it. Uh, in your typical virtual meeting, you can use screen share to show your screen. Uh, but when you think about it a little bit further, this is probably one of the most promising features going into the future. I've been able to share video and other um, others over similar services, um, but they all kind of work about the same. Uh, the problem is it's definitely not ready yet for what we all have in mind, uh, and it would be uh, Fantastic to just you know do some uh, virtual gatherings over you know any of these services, but it's it's really not up to par. Um, and I really learned this the hard way uh, in my last class. Unfortunately, audio is not up to expectations. That's for sure, um, and neither is video. And uh, these were these were things that I've done over the last um, you know couple of days or so, and um, you know none of them are are really um, giving me the kind of result that I want. Um, clarity may be okay with video, but I've had more choppy experiences. Uh, it'd be very difficult to recommend any of these in all honesty uh, for the purpose of a watch party or listening party. Uh, Microsoft Teams works similar to Zoom, so I wouldn't expect that to work well either. Um, there's an app called Discord that has this capability, but runs into the same kind of audio problems. So. Uh, I'm looking for an easier solution right now, and um, that's exactly what this presentation is all about. So a quick note on Facebook's watch party. Uh, I've used it before, and it's pretty much exactly what I would expect of a watch party. Uh, as you see in the picture, um, you can watch a video simultaneously with your friends or family and chat in real time. Uh, video and audio are also what you'd expect. Uh, the drawbacks from what I recall are that number one, videos are restricted to what, it's, what, what is natively available on Facebook. Uh, so that means you can't watch your own videos you know, on your computer and share it with everyone unless they're uploaded to Facebook, of course, or part of the actual feature. Uh, and two, I can't seem to find Facebook's uh, watch party right now. So um, you know, if you, you find it yourself, um, you know, go ahead and navigate and feel free or feel free to explore it. But um, that's the kind of experience that we're, we're kind of looking for. And, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of uh, share some solutions that I think are pretty good. 
So um, I know there are a few uh, browsers extensions that uh, enable this type of feature, but that's more of a workaround for native files. But um, before I get to that, um, I wanted to find something that, you know, you can watch with others in real time. Um, share any local video that you have on your hard drive, um, especially it being free. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a huge thing. And um, chat would be um, a good thing, but I um, kept that as optional. Um, again, there were some uh, Chrome or browser extensions that enable uh, this kind of functionality, but um, it's not as optimal, I want to say. Um, but um, that's when I remembered about an app that I stumbled upon uh, called Plex. And that's what I'll be talking about today. So uh, Plex allows you to watch any video from your uh, library with other people online. And this is the power of this application. Uh, you will need to create a free account. And again, it's free. Um, so, you know, it's not, not to worry about, um, you know, paying or then any kind of uh, any, anything like that. Uh, download and install what's called their uh, Plex Media Server. Uh, sync up your files. It's part of the setup process and or folders. Then you add uh, friends or family to your network. And then uh, once you have your movies loaded, um, you may want to restart your media server or toggle your login by refreshing your login. So um, it sounds pretty simple in all honesty. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty, pretty good service and I just wanted to get into a demo, so. Forgot to switch to that, but let me go ahead and switch into browser. So this is Plex. Um, I'm pretty sure you can see this, uh, but just go ahead and log in. And it's uh, your typical, you know, create your own account, that kind of thing. And I'm already logged in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, get started. Essentially, essentially, when you come back, you get to this um, default um, kind of like dashboard and you just press launch. But essentially you log in and this is kind of what you see. Um, one of the things that you need to do is uh, add, um, you know, your media files, that kind of thing. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add one for um, you know, demo purposes. And one of the things about this is that you need to set up your server. Um, I should actually back up a little bit, but um, if you create your Plex account, it will kind of guide you to um, get this uh, file. So you'll see this if you have a Mac, you know, it'll guide you to download the Mac version. If you have a Windows version, you download that, of course, and if you're using any of these other uh, formats or platforms, then you can go ahead and, um, you know, acquire those files. But um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just your typical installation kind of thing. But in the, essentially, this, this um, media server um, enables the, the shareability, I guess you could say, of your different media files. And in this case, we're talking about the movies. So be sure to um, get this installed and then go back to Plex. So Plex will um, guide you how to set up your server. Uh, there's a number of prompts that you can kind of just click next, that kind of thing. Uh, but I've already done this. So you can kind of see that I have this server that I called um, RMB, R RMBP 12. Um, that's just a shortcut for Retina MacBook Pro. Um, so um, what you want to do
So as you're setting up your server, it's going to ask you to select a folder. Uh, in this case, I already selected mine. Uh, but um, what you want to do is navigate towards, yeah, this is essentially the same window that you will see. So I already have a, one of the Karate Kids, um, what you call it, loaded in here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and choose this other video, which is Mission, Mission Impossible 2. And essentially it just um, references the actual movie. It doesn't actually copy it into Plex itself. And then as soon as you um, select these directories, it's going to um, map it back to your uh, library, essentially. And so uh, what, I, what I would expect is that under Plex, under the, um, your account, you'll be able to see um, you know, the files that you select. <clears throat> So as you see, I selected that uh, particular movie and now it's part of uh, the collection here. And it's, uh, it's pretty easy how to actually watch a movie together with, with people. So what you wanna do is just click on the title itself. And then as, as you see here, um, there's this more button. You click it and there's this option here called watch together. Um, hold on for a second. I don't know why this is buzzing. And that's pretty much it. But before you um, select that option, you want to make sure that, that your users are part of your network first. So um, go to users and sharing, and then you can add a friend um, and then type in their email address um, or if they're already part of the network, um, you can just type in their username. But essentially, you want to make sure that your friends are part of the network already or they have the um, an account, and then you can select them. And that's pretty much all you got to do. Um, once they're part of your network, you know, go back to your uh, account or your, uh, your Plex dashboard and uh, choose under your server. And again, go to the movie that you want to start watching together. Click on this uh, button with the three dots and press watch together. And then select your, you know, people that are your, your friends or your family that you want to, you know, watch with. So in this case, this is just an extra account that I have and press invite. So once that's established, uh, you can go ahead and just, you know, you know, uh, contact your friend or, you know, whoever and make and tell them like, let's start watching the movie now or something. And then all I have to do is press start. Now what um, the server enables you to do or this uh, Plex Media server enables, um, you know, your, your audience to do is reference this file directly from their side. So there is definitely, um, it's a little loud. So let me turn this down a little bit. So um, they have kind of like a local copy, you know, access from their side. And the quality of the video and the quality of the audio really depends on um, the file itself as opposed to a network kind of connection. And there might be some hiccups because of the connection, but the quality of the video and the quality of the audio is pretty much as clear as um, what you're getting from your side. And that's the power of this application. So again, we're watching Mission Impossible 2 here. Um, and, um, you know, once um, you know, the person joins in, you'll actually see that they're part of the party. Uh, and they have the ability, um, or your other users have the ability to pause it and, um, you know, rewind or forward, as you can kind of see here at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure what other options are available, but like we can take a look. Uh, looks like you can kind of uh, change the quality a little bit, but really, there's really no need to do that unless you're on a really bad connection. Um, let's see what else here. Um, as the main, as, as the source, you can technically download the file, but I, 
it may be possible to download from the other side, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, you can get it, uh, some statistics and that kind of thing, but I don't necessarily think that's as necessary for um, our purpose here. But, um, you know, this is as good of an option as anything else out there right now. Um, Facebook's watch party is probably um, the best option, I think, online as it is right now. But um, this is as good as it gets. Um, you can share, again, any file from your directory and... Um, yeah, watch it in real time with your friends and family. So um, do you have any questions right now? Again, please feel free to, you know, add it to the chat or um, if you if you don't quite um, or if you have questions about any of these. So again, if you kind of pause it, it'll be paused on the other side as well. Um, these are pretty much um, being watched at the same time. There might be a little bit of a lag on the other side. You know, they, they may be watching the, the movie from maybe a second or two a little bit uh, behind you or maybe a little bit, um, you know, before you. But um, for the most part, you're pretty much watching, you know, these these movies um, simultaneously. And uh, that, that's a really great thing to, about this um, you know, Plex application. Um, the thing about this is that we don't have the ability to kind of chat or have an online chat, just like we have a capability in um, a Zoom, but um, you can have um, you know, any kind of uh, text service or uh, messenger service such as Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or, you know, if you have your text, um, your, um, you know, if you're using Apple, you can use messages and, you know, just have it, um, you know, in the background so you can interact with, you know, the people that you're watching the movie with. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, uh, uh, pretty much all you need to know about Plex. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, uh, think um, so yeah when you finish you want to make sure that you turn off your server uh, I'm not sure how it's done on the PC but uh, at the top of a Mac you'll see that there's this kind of carrot option or carrot kind of logo thing um, and all you have to do is press quit so just make sure that that's um, you know inact or you inactivate that for um, you know after you're finished uh, let's see, unless you want to keep it going for your other friends or family, uh, but for the purpose of just, uh, you know, doing a, a, an online watch party, that's, that's kind of what you want to do, um, because you have to remember that applications, any kind of running applications allocate resources, so, um, you know, that's important to kind of remember that. Um, let me switch over. Oh, I see in the chat. Can you do a live event? Uh, how do you mean, Pat? Um, I see Marilyn, you said uh, no questions, but fascinating. Just like to know what's out there. <laughs> cool. Um, Pat, if you can clarify that, um, how do you mean live event? Um, kind of like watching it in um, as a stream, you mean? Uh, let me know and I'll kind of, I'll be monitoring the chat as well. So let me get back to the like a concert that occurs at a specific time. Hmm. That is a really good question. Um, I think that has more to do with live streaming as opposed to uh, watching a video online. So um, that's definitely another another or subject matter altogether because I do streaming as well. Um, this technically what we're doing on Zoom uh, is streaming. Uh, so um, if you kind of like hooked up, let's say you um, you were filming a live concert, um, you want to be able to stream that to your friends or your friend your family. Um, through, you know, Facebook Live or, 
um, you know, any of the other services. I'm very familiar with Twitch. Um, it's, it's a very, it's probably by far the, the biggest live streaming uh, network. Um, so um, yeah, that, that's definitely something to um, kind of explore a bit further, but um, live streaming or when you live stream a, a video clip or your footage, um, with services again like Facebook Live or Twitch, you have this ability to chat and um, you can just uh, pretty much give that link for that stream to your friends and family and they'll be able to see exactly what um, you know you're you're broadcasting. So um, I don't know if there are any other ways that you can do that. Oh, it's it's definitely a different subject altogether because there are applications to help you um, stream uh, video content. Uh, so you'd have to kind of use a third party application to go through um, go through or use a third op, a third party application to go to Facebook Live or Twitch. And there's a number of options and. I just wanted to mention briefly, um, but uh, there are services like OBS, which is called Open Broadcasting Software, um, which is the one that I use, but there's a number of uh, services that are very similar. So um, if you have any questions about that, or if you kind of dive into a, uh, dive into that, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'll definitely have some uh, contact information for you later on. So, um, but uh, yeah, feel free to ask more questions and I will continue with our presentation. So, uh, okay. So we did our uh, demo of Plex. And again, uh, I just wanted to mention again, there's no chat available when you're um, using Plex by itself. I did mention to stop the server. Uh, and lastly, there is a paid music option. Um, how do I describe this? Um, if you want to listen to music online through Plex, you have to pay. Uh, but that's the solution that I'm about to get into. Um, and you don't have to pay. So um, these are the things that I kind of considered when uh, kind of coming up with this little uh, course. So um, just know that um, if you want to listen to music with others uh, through Plex, you have to pay. So that brings me to the following. Uh, Scener is a browser extension that enables uh, joint real-time viewing amongst many popular services. Uh, it works with YouTube, which is what I'm going to be focusing in on. Uh, I've been using YouTube as a means to listen to music, which is, it's perfectly fine. It may not be the best quality at times, but it does its work. Um, Scener also enables things such as your webcam and mic. Um, it enables you to use your webcam and mic, that is, and includes a chat box. So it's pretty much what a viewing party online should be. Uh, but accommodate, accommodates the services listed. So that's YouTube, that's Netflix, that's Disney Plus, that's Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, uh, Vimeo, uh, HBO Max, and others. And it's such a, it's such a, um, how do you, it, it, it encapsulates so many services and it, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I just learned about this, but, um, you know, if you want to be doing, things online with friends, especially in this day and age with uh, us being stuck at home uh, with a pandemic before things get back to normal. I mean, these are ways to kind of hang out with, with your friends and family. Um, again, this um, the content is shared in real time roughly. So um, I was doing my tests earlier and um, essentially you're listening or you're uh, watching you know, the, the content literally at the same time. Um, you know, you could be only uh, microseconds, um, you know, difference, you know, on, on um, you know, on the different ends. But for the most part, it's like you're, um, you're having an on, uh, a gathering online, essentially. And this is a perfect, perfect um, 
solution. Um, so again, I mentioned that the chat's included and uh, you can enable your webcam. Um, you will ins need to install the Chrome extension. So everyone in your party should have this um, Chrome extension um, installed. So that's again, uh, going to scener.com essentially. Um, you need to create a free Scener account. It's just like um, signing up for any other service. Um, it will guide you to enable um, you know, your account such as YouTube in this particular case. Um, all you have to do is just, just confirm the prompts. Um, you know, they'll say like, can we connect to this service like YouTube or, you know, Disney or Hulu or whatever. Um, but it's, it's pretty much a guided kind of setup and it's really easy. I got this thing up and running literally uh, less than 10 seconds in all honesty. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, very quick. Um, and um, let's see what else. Um, so let's just get to the demo. So here we are in Scener, and you'll see that um, you need to log in, that kind of thing. And I already have an account that I've, um, you know, kind of got set up. So essentially, um, when you're signed in, you can just say host a web party, literally. And then um, you can create a party for later, or you can just get it started right now. Uh, apparently, um, it's invite only for up to 10 people, and you can turn on your cameras, or everyone can turn on their cameras, or uh, I didn't really see this option from before. You can host a private or public watch party for unlimited guests, which is, that's pretty cool. Um, invite co-host to join you on a on camera or mic. So um, you can kind of uh, host, um, you know, kind of a watch party with maybe a few of your friends and then, um, yeah, broadcast that. But for, for now, we'll just uh, do this public one or this uh, private one, or kind of semi-private rather, uh, and just say host now. So as you see, uh, you can, can enable your camera as well as enable your microphone and just make sure that you are uh, choosing the right one. Um, I just wanna select the microphone and um, you can see that you can do a little bit of a test to make sure that it's working. Um, and of course, with your camera, you can make sure that um, you know, you're selecting the right camera and you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's, it's a nice uh, feature that uh, they, they've enabled, so. Um, we'll just go ahead and uh, turn them off actually and say done. So now I have to switch over into the interface. So just a second, uh, I'm gonna go with the entire desktop here now. So as you can kind of see, um, hold on for a second. I believe you can now see this. So I'm going to go ahead and put, push this to the other side or push, push this below. Um, so this is essentially the Scener um, interface. It's kind of a couple browser windows all together. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and choose YouTube. And it's connecting to my account for now. And I, um, I essentially created a Christmas uh, demo um, playlist and we'll just go ahead and play it. So I already started this a little while ago, but I'm gonna uh, start it from the beginning. And then um, you see here on the right hand side, um, if you can't really see this, let me know, but I believe you can see this. Um, there's a scener kind of uh, sub window here, and um, there's this copy link or copy invite link, which is exactly what you want to share with your friends and family. So go ahead and copy that or press that button and it should copy the link. And I'm going to go ahead and um, 
email this to myself. There we go. So now, um, you know, a person can click on the link once they get it. And uh, you'll see that there's a prompt to join the party. And uh, let me go ahead and kind of move this aside. So as you see, um, you know, there's a chat option here on the right hand side, and then I can go ahead um, and type in something, you know, in the chat box. Uh, his name. So um, I'm typing it using this uh, LF Media Lab account, which is, um, you know, um, just a temporary account for our, our Media Lab. So you can see that you can interact with a uh, text option uh, through Scener, which is really fantastic. So on this other computer, I'm listening, or the, the uh, playlist is, is uh, playing right now concurrently with what I have uh, playing right now on the, de the desktop right now. And you can technically control this, pause it, forward, choose another uh, video as you need to, but you can literally create a playlist, um, you know, with YouTube full of music and uh, use Scener as a way to, um, uh, as a way to listen to music together. And uh, this is just really, really powerful stuff. Again, I uh, just wanted to point out that you can enable your camera and I believe you can see, um, you know, my desktop again, just make sure that you, um, the, um, the desktop is being shared. Yeah, okay, it is. And so what I'm going to do here is to enable the, the webcam. And then as you see on the right hand side, um, it's just gonna, you know, toggle your camera so you can interact with people um, and turn on your microphone as well. And I'm not going to do that right now, but essentially you can talk with people uh, using this service. So between, um, this is kind of like what uh, Zoom and all the other um, uh, services right now should be doing. And I'm sure that they're going to get to a level like this at some point, but um, this is kind of what we have to deal with at this point, uh, because it is such a, you know, newer kind of uh, um, a service, I guess you could say. Um, so this is essentially the, uh, the workaround. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there's so many different things that you can do with this. Again, it's not restricted to YouTube, it's not restricted to music, but in this context, I'm um, kind of showing you uh, how to listen to music with other people. You can, you know, watch uh, clips full of, uh, you know, funny things if you want, or, um, you know, whatever, whatever you want to watch with your friends and family. Um, it's really up to you. But again, it's not restricted to YouTube. You can do Disney Plus. You can do Hulu. You can do Amazon. Um, and so this is uh, kind of like using the online version of Plex and using, uh, trying to, um, or consuming content. Uh, that's not just local, but is available online. So um, not sure what else I wanted to say about this. Um, again, everybody will need to be using the Chrome extension. You'll need to install this and it's pretty straightforward. Again, going to uh, scener.com, you have literally a button that says install and it will take you through the prompts. Um, and they'll also be needed, needing to use the Google Chrome browser, of course, because it is a Chrome extension. Um, I already mentioned that. Let's see. So other notes, um, of course, you, you'll need to be logged in where necessary for accounts like Netflix, Disney Plus, and Amazon Prime Video. Uh, you'll definitely definitely need to um, you know, have your um, have your account established, that kind of thing. Um, what else? 
Uh, in terms of listening online uh, concurrently, you can do that on Spotify, but you will need a paid premium account. So um, that was something that um, I just wanted to mention, but I wanted to kind of do a free option. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, Pad, Karen, Marilyn, did you have any questions? Okay, hold on for a second. Okay, well, let me get back to the rest of the slides. So again, uh, you can feel free to uh, contact me with any questions. Um, this is definitely a newer thing, I think overall, because there's a lot of options out there that are more of a workaround as opposed to being natively available. Uh, Plex is definitely the most, um, I wanna say sophisticated of uh, the um, concurrent watch parties that are available. Um, again, Facebook, uh, Facebook's watch party is probably um, one of the better ones out there right now. Uh, but um, between the two, I think uh, those are the best offerings at this point. So if you have any feedback, uh, please feel free to visit this website, lakeforestlibrary.org slash feedback. Um, definitely would, it be, uh, would be appreciated. And lastly, um, if you want, if you have any questions or, you know, whether it be for hosting your own online watch party or you have any digital projects that you're doing from uh, scanning to uh, video editing to uh, any kind of web-based uh, project, um, let's see, graphic design, um, anything digital in all honesty. That's what we do at the Media Lab. Um, and you know, uh, our, our library is currently closed to the public, uh, but we still do offer some help from, um, you know, remotely, uh, from our remote, um, you know, locations. Um, so uh, if you need any help, please feel free to make an appointment by visiting our homepage lakeforestlibrary.org slash media lab you will find a you know a form to fill out uh, and our available times um, add us on facebook and instagram we do a number of live streams uh, i just currently did one on um, uh, for uh, creating um, our, our uh, iconic appetizer in uh, filipino cuisine called lumpia so you may want to check that out. I also added to our blog as well. So um, it's, it's something that's uh, pretty nice for the holiday season or any kind of, uh, you know, um, celebration. And I know that uh, we're all kind of um, trying to isolate and, and uh, trying to stay safe at this point. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a recipe to, to um, keep in mind for future purposes. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post our recordings and other things. Uh, that's uh, youtube.com slash user slash uh, LFK REF. And uh, lastly, upcoming classes. Um, this class is uh, not going to be repeated for a while, but um, Kristen is teaching her Shutterfly class on Wednesday. Uh, and how to create custom gifts with that. So um, if you have any photo projects that you want to create um, gifts with, um, Kristen's the person and she's really great to, uh, with, with Shutterfly. She's an expert pretty much. And um, my class uh, with, uh, with uh, WordPress, um, an introduction to WordPress is on Saturday the 19th at 1 p.m. So if you have any um, if you'd like to learn about blogging or learn about the, the platform, um, it's been something that I've, I've known for a long time. So, um, you know, feel free to uh, sign up and uh, uh, listen in at one o'clock on Saturday. Karen, Marilyn, Pat, thank you very much for listening in and um, 
yeah, have a great holiday season and uh, please stay safe. Uh, take care, everyone.